We're trying to optimize where we have a production facility capable of producing 60,000 widgets a day. So we're not going to tell them, oh, well, you should produce 100,000 because that's what's going to be best with your cost. So we're going to stop. Our um, upper bound is going to be 60,000. That's what they're capable of producing. And their total daily cost of producing X widgets in a day is given by the C of X. There is our objective function, what we're going to try to find any critical numbers for and absolutely minimize in this case because we're talking about cost. So how many widgets per day should they produce in order to minimize their production cost? And what is the minimum production cost going to be? So we're going to do our two steps. We're going to find any critical numbers. And then we're going to test them on our interval of interest. So the interval for this one, well, what's the least amount of something that they could make? It would be zero. And then what's the most amount that they can make? They say they can make up to 60,000. So we're going to start by taking the derivative of C of X. Well, I notice C of X has a fraction in it. So I don't want to use the quotient rule for that fraction. So instead, I'm going to take a step and just rewrite C of X, what we are trying to find the absolute min of. So we're going to write 250,000 plus 0 0.08 X plus this is going to be 200 million and it's really x to the negative power because we're going to pull it out of the denominator and since the power wasn't written it's going to be a negative one all right now that we have it rewritten we're ready to take the derivative of this first piece taking the derivative of 200,000 is zero because that's a constant next piece what's the derivative of 0 0.08x well, it's just going to be 0 0.08. And then last piece, bring down the power, subtract from the new power. So I'm going to have 200 million times negative 1. This is going to give me negative 200 million. And then we have x to the new power. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And we're setting this equal to 0. So we're trying to solve something that has a negative exponent. So remember, we want to make anything that's a negative exponent, we want to put it down in the denominator where it belongs. So I'm going to say this is 0 0.08, and we have minus 200 million divided by x squared equals 0. So now we want to try to get x on one side by itself. So we're going to either subtract the 0.08 or add that 200 million over x squared. I'm gonna actually add it over because I'd rather work with two positive numbers than two negative ones. So instead of subtracting 0.08, I'm gonna add over 200 million divided by x squared. So now I have the x on one side by itself, but it's stuck in the denominator. So how do we get it out of the denominator? Well, we wanna take both sides and multiply it by that denominator. That way that division will be canceled out with multiplication. So we get 0 0.08x squared equals 200 million. So we had a negative exponent, we put it in the denominator, then we moved the 200 million over, that way we had x on one side and the constant on the other, and then we multiplied by x squared to get the x out of the denominator. And now we're at the point where we're close to having x by itself, but it, right now it's multiplied by 0 0.08. So our next step is going to be to divide. We want to get rid of multiplication, so we're going to do some division. And that's going to give us x squared equals, and I'm going to do 200 million divided by 0 0.08, and that's a really big number, so I'm just going to actually leave it as a fraction. 200 million divided by 0 0.08. And now I'm ready for my last step. I want to get x by itself. Right now it's squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Remember, we're going to do plus or minus the square root of any number. Right? If you're taking the square root of 25, that could have been positive 5 or negative 5. 
2 squared and negative 2 squared are both 4. So the square root of 4 is positive or negative 2. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to grab my calculator and plug in this huge number, the square root of 200 million divided by 0 0.08, and I get positive 50,000 and negative 50,000, right? Plus or minus the square root. And now we're going to plug in our critical numbers that are on the interval of interest. So I'm going to plug in to cost. So I'm going to do C of zero is my lower endpoint. My upper endpoint is going to be C of 60,000. And then I have to test all critical numbers that are on that interval of interest. So we have two critical numbers, 50,000 and negative 50,000. And we do not have to test both of them. Negative 50,000 is not on our interval of interest. You would never tell a company, hey, to minimize your cost, you should produce negative four of something. You can't produce a negative amount. This is not on the interval and for good reason. You can't produce negative 250,000 of something or negative 50,000 of something. Always has to be a positive production amount. So we're only going to test our one critical number that's on the interval of interest. 50,000 is between zero, the least amount of something you could ever produce, and this one's 60,000, the most of something that they can produce that they told us in this problem. That's their maximum amount that they're capable of making in that facility. So now if we plug in each of these to the original function to see what our y values are, we're going to see which one's going to minimize the cost. So plug in zero on your calculator. I'd be careful on this. Plug in zero, you'd get 250,000 plus 0 0.08 times zero, zero. So still, so far we're at 250,000, our overhead cost. And then if we do 200 million divided by zero, what's that gonna be? It's gonna be an error. You cannot divide by zero. So this is actually a number you can't plug in. It's undefined. They have built their cost function in a way that they would never consider not producing something, which actually kind of makes sense. If you owned a t-shirt company, you wouldn't just be like, well, I wonder what would happen if we don't produce any t-shirts. That wouldn't be a great business plan. Yeah, there wouldn't be as much cost if you don't produce anything, but you're paying to own this company and then you're not going to sell any product unless you actually make some product. So C of zero is actually undefined, which is fine. We were never going to recommend that they don't produce anything anyway. So now I'm going to take 50,000 and plug it into the original function. 250,000, that fixed overhead cost they must have, plus 0 0.08 times 50,000, plus in parentheses, I'm going to plug in 200 million divided by X in my calculator, and I'm getting $258,000. Compared to if I replace the x with a 60,000, remember to put that fraction in parentheses on your calculator, and the total cost for that day would be 258,000, 133, and it, the decimal keeps going, so it's money, I'm gonna round to the nearest penny. You always stop at the de second decimal place with money, can't go any further. So what should they produce? Do they want to have a cost of 258,000 in a day or 258,133? Remember, we're looking at cost, so we want to minimize it. We're going to say they should produce 50,000 widgets for an absolute min daily total cost of $258,000. So they're capable of producing up to 60,000, but it seems like that extra 10,000 is too much cost for them. If they want to minimize their cost, they shouldn't do the extra 10,000 because maybe that involves paying people overtime um, in order to stay later and make those extra 10,000. Something's making so, it so that the cost goes up and it might not be worth it. So if they want to minimize their cost while producing something, they should keep their production at 50,000 widgets.